Okay, picking back up commentary on Isaiah 53 by Rashi and myself, a righteous servant of God, Moshiach, prophet like Moses, and Elijah. And here's a case in point coming right up from God. These are his words. This is God's commentary on 53 people. The entirety of chapter 21, God's words on 51, as he would have his prophet, the veritable mouthpiece on earth of God, Moses, prophet like Moses, tell it to you. i got two covenants to deliver also. I am his representation. <clears throat> this is the last paragraph we read from uh, part six. This is part seven. A righteous servant bearing up to this fine refinement is bearing the unrighteousness of the Jewish people to be recognized as a prophet of God. That in and of, that in and of itself will draw the Jewish people back to Judaism. Recounsel the families one to the other and make them any righteous, made whole and healed. Okay, recounseling the families one to the other with the covenant, the covenant Moses delivered, modified, amended, confirmed, affirmed, rather than strict compliance, Malachi 3, God says, be mindful of the laws, rules, and commands I gave Moses at order. As for each sect of Judaism, Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, to decide themselves. I've already gone over this. Uh, so picking back up from there, Rashi says, indeed, he bore our illnesses, an expression of but in all places. But now we see that this came to him, not because of his low state, but that he was chastised with pains so, all, so that all the nations be atoned for with Israel's suffering. The illness that should rightfully have come to us he bore. And God just sent this in to me. He didn't really hear words, but you got to remember when this is this is written. Okay, this is long before um, the pogroms, Holocaust, uh, everything that went on with Spain when they told the Jewish people they had to leave or convert. I can't, uh, the Inquisition. So really, you just have the defeat of Babylon. Uh, by Babylon, the defeat by the Assyrians of the northern kingdom, uh, Babylon and the southern kingdom, Judah and Benjamin. And uh, I don't know. But now we see that this came to him, came to Israel, not because of his low state. Uh, he's saying he bore our illnesses. That's why Kerry is suffering, by the way, not allowed in the Hebrew Bible. Every man suffers for his own wrongs. But that he was chastised with pain so that all the nations be atoned for with Israel's suffering. He's saying he's atoning to the nations by Israel's suffering. That's vicarious suffering. That, that's, that's vicarious. He's saying Israel's gone through this horrible time, the Jewish people, So that the nations would be forgiven of doing this to the Jewish people. Go figure. Again, you, you listen to a man, uh, 14, anyway, from the middle, early Middle Ages. You know, he didn't go to university. He didn't go to law school. All he did was have a book, had his own particular personality, and like Rambam, who likes just to make things up. You know, not very humble man. He thinks he can say anything he wants, and that's it. And the things he says helps with donations. 
choose one of here. You mean they're going to stop hating us? Is anti-Semitism going to go away? And I don't blame them. But it's not. <laughs> it's just not. It's very difficult to change people. God's been trying to... God has been changing me, but it's taken 16 years. And he hadn't lived up... Well, he's lived up a little bit this month. Yeah, I, I don't think he's weakened me. I think he's just trying to revive me a little bit. I, 20, 2022 beat me down to a pulp. <laughs> this says that God chastises, which means to discipline, especially by corporal punishment, all of the Jewish people, so that all of the Gentiles will be atoned of their sins for Israel's suffering. There it is. That's God talking. He, he said it a lot better than me. This is the ideology of the Christians. Vicarious suffering of one man for the sins of another, contrary to God's teachings. That's straight from God. All right, verse 6. We all went astray like sheep. We have turned. Oh, oh, wait a minute. This is still the witnesses. Uh, no, verse 7, uh, Isaiah speaks. And then uh, 10, 11, and 12 is God. Three speakers in Isaiah 53. <clears throat> and the Lord accepted his prayers for the inequity of all of us. That's Rashi's Bible. The Lord accepted his prayer for the inequity of all of us. I don't know what his prayer was. We all want to straighten. This is uh, Rashi. His midrash, we all went astray like sheep. Now it is revealed that all the heathens, that's the nations, Gentiles are heathens in case you didn't know, had erred. The heathens had erred. Accepted his prayers. He, that would be God, accepted his, that would be Israel's, prayers and was appeased concerning the iniquity of all of us, that he did not destroy the world. Did anybody read that? <laughs> Here's what it says. Oh, wait a minute. Accepted. An expression of supplication. Oh, thank you, Rashi. I'll Google it next time. Keith. This is JPS 85, 1985. We all went astray like sheep, each going his own way. And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of all of us. It just goes right back to the fire of fire. He wrote, you know, you don't really want to get into all that. Yeah, that's the fire of fire. And, and basically... God chose to crush him with disease, exposed him to death, that he would offer himself for guilt. It's almost easier to read that now that you know the fire of refinement, that he offered to go through the fire of refinement to remove the guilt of the witnesses, the people, the first six verses. Oh yeah, we just finished six. Um... That's what that is. And no, that's why nobody can interpret it but me. And I have my backup is Ezekiel. And why it's done. He takes somebody of a furious and bitter spirit. You know, somebody that you just don't want to sit amongst a bunch of nice people. Like the Jewish, religious Jewish people. And uh those who don't practice Judaism also. They seem like a great people. Um, but, you know, the last survey said 30% of them. Okay, don't give me the word. He's not letting me tell you what it is. I know what it, I'm talking about. He keeps trying. He says he's fine-tuning me, man. I said, well, I can't feel anything inside. Nothing. I'm <laughs> It's just blank. He just beat it out of me over 16 years. And he's still messing with me. Albeit, it's been a little bit lighter than 2022, which was heinous acts of cruelty 
torture and torment. I asked him. I see these big six words, you know, punishment, maltreatment, etc., etc. I said, where's torture? Why do you put torture in here? What about torment? Sometimes they just won't stop talking. Torment. May as well have it. <laughs> Never mind. And heinous acts of cruelty. We well, slam somebody face down in the same bed. Would everybody agree that's a heinous act of cruelty? It is. And as he said, second lesson. First lesson, your pain means nothing to me. Second lesson, there's no low I won't go to have you be the prophet I want you to be for the incredible things you have to get done. And people, it's a long list. It's not just make the name righteous and clear the way for the Lord to the third temple. There's, there's so much more. I mean, well, anyway. Okay, and the Lord visited upon him. Okay, we all want to stray like sheep. This is my commentary to six. The Jewish people who are the witnesses and the speakers of verses 1 through 6, remember, combined by quotes, stopped following the laws of God in one manner or another before they became righteous by the knowledge, the teachings of the righteous servant. The knowledge that God's doing what he said he's going to do, that he's got another prophet like Moses. You think that's not going to excite some people? And then they hear there's a new covenant of sin and forgiveness to build the third temple? They, you know, it's a boon, uh, really, for the rabbis. This is going to bring people back, especially young people, to synagogue. And they're going to start studying because they're going to find out about heaven through me as Elijah. Everything Jewish. God becomes the information of your mind because you don't have one. And they've already doing it with me. Here on earth, I know what it is to exist in heaven with him being the information of your mind. The difference with me is, he's got my whole life with me at birth. There's nothing he can't bring back to me. When he's the information of my mind, it seems like, I, you know, I'm the same guy, but I can tell the differences. Uh, in heaven, the information will be all things Jewish, which I've already covered. But that will make people write tour on their own heart because they're gonna to wanna to study. Because it'll make your heavenly experience all that much better. It's great to know the talent, even though we're saying, wait a minute, you got to throw some of that out. You know, you got to be a bit more reasonable about it. You can't just take what Ram Bam says and say, our sages say. You know, what do you say? Learn how to read the Bible. You got to separate what was done for antiquity, which cannot possibly apply today. Resurrection of the dead is the one uh, example I give the most, but there's many others. You can find it in just about every book of the prophets. It's in there somewhere. And uh, it's fun to look for. And the Lord visited the guilt of all of us. Midrash. This would happen in the day of the Lord when God requires a man to be his visible representation and speak and write his words as Moses did in the day of the Lord a Gentile is tested by God and upon passing the test the man, test of devotion the man becomes the righteous servant David Elijah and the prophet like Moses four righteous servants to come I just gave you their names one description and the description fits me you won't find another man who matches 53.10, which I've gone over to, and we'll go over it again soon. Uh oh, thank you. My sister. Me, my sister, my elderly parents in their 90s, all living on Social Security. The house is paid, the condominium is paid for. I get room and board for helping. You know, doctors, we both take them to doctors all the time. and They can't hardly get out of bed. Uh, just anything and everything. Lunch every day. My sister just bought me a Whataburger and a fries. 
which I greatly appreciate. Oh, she, she she's a great cook, and every day she's coming up with something. Um, he accepts God's offer of possibly, it does say that, it might, might, have long life. This is the text. After being crushed with disease in return of his offering of himself for guilt. To become the righteous servant and remove the guilt of the witnesses. Uh, and this is still six. We're still talking about them. And um, yeah. oh, and keep me in mind that I was told I was going to die in a month from untreatable stage four lung cancer twenty two years ago. So, all of a sudden, I'm 50, and God's speaking to me. Which, again, is a very interesting chapter in the life of God's righteous servant, which are the words of God. Exactly how it happened that day, which I can remember all of it vividly. And um, it's called God Talks to an Atheist. <laughs> and I didn't even flip out or anything. He can control your emotions. You know, he told me, I made emotions. And I can put knowledge in your mind without speaking. You knew who I was before you heard a word from me. I said, huh. I was wondering why I was so calm about it. I was basically almost ignoring you. <laughs> you know, well, you have to read it. <clears throat> you can find it at keithmccartymccarty.wordpress.com. It starts out with uh, another story, also written by God, and it's in this book. Uh, Isaiah, uh, the day of the Lord versus, I think, Messianic era, or Messianic era versus the day of the Lord. It's very interesting. Then you come to um, Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord, and I think the life of the righteous servant follows that. And there's many other writings. Anything in there comes from God. He accepts God's offer possibly having a long life after being crushed with disease in return of his offering of himself for guilt. A covenant between the God of Israel and the Gentile. The guilt of the witnesses visited upon him. The guilt they have for sinning and emotion. It wasn't really their guilt. Can you imagine somebody taking the guilt of the Jewish people? You know, they're always going around the world. It's me. They always feel guilty. <laughs> I know it's a stereotype, but can you imagine if he could somehow harness that and put it on you? It'd kill you. He'd spontaneously combust. <laughs> no, it's to become the righteous servant, make the many righteous, and remove, uh, uh, remove this guilt. This is the last of the verses by the witnesses of God's righteous servant. The second speaker of Isaiah 53 is Isaiah in verses 7 through 10. That means God handles 11 and 12. And you can tell just by the language. 7, verse 7, 53, 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, disfigured at birth. Yet, he would not open his mouth. Like a lamb to the slaughter, he would be brought. And like a ewe that is unique before her shears, and he would not open his mouth. Rashi. Oh, that's from Rashi's book. I don't know that mine's much different. It seems to be the same. Rashi, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Midrash, which means his commentary. Behold, he was oppressed by taskmasters and people who exert pressure. This would be all the people gathered as one man, Israel. Israel was oppressed and Israel was afflicted. Behold, Israel was oppressed by taskmasters and people who exert pressure. 
Is that true for all Jews at this time? Had they gathered as one man in Israel? Of course not. Yet he would not open his mouth. He would suffer and remain silent like the lamb that is brought to the slaughter and like the ooh that is mute before her shears. And he would not open his mouth. This referred to Israel would not open his mouth. When did the Jewish people stop talking? That's one man. When? He loved to talk, so do I. Okay, here, this is key. This is me. He was maltreated. This is from JPS, verse 7. He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. He did not open his mouth like a sheep being led to slaughter, like a new dumb before those who shear her. He did not open his mouth. Okay, breaking it down. He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. Midrash. This verse can be identified in the book of Ezekiel. God maltreats him, not man. Maltreatment is a part of being chastised and punished by the words and power of God to be made suitable for his purposes. With God, you're always submissive. I can assure you. Do you cannot find it? He's like, okay, what do you say? Right now, I'm going. Let's go for a walk. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. It's raining. It's cold. Great. Here I am. Let's go. He did that early on. Okay, it's necessary to break the will of a man and temper and calm his soul and emotions. Ezekiel said he went in bitterness and the fury of his spirit in the hand of God. Now, you would think being in the hand of God was a good thing. Now, he's taking care of you. <laughs> you know, well, he's furious and bitter. That's the fire of fire. That's the, there's it is. There it is. Why is he bitter and furious? Because God is maltreating him, punishing him. The only thing that's not in there is wounded. He didn't get wounded, best I can tell. You know, crushed and bruised, chastised. <laughs> I'll give you a chastise if I can remember it. I don't think it's written in there. Uh, okay, we'll get to it. You got to look for them. You have to know the things I'm teaching you. I am the teacher. It will bring you righteousness. Listen, if you're watching this, if you're following this book, you're going to know more than 99% of all rabbis, and that's assuming at least one rabbi is reading the book, too. If none of them read it, then you know more than any rabbi on the face of the earth because they just don't get all this. They can't explain 53. Guilt offering, go to Leviticus for the murder of the, of the Holocaust for a man who's crushed with disease. But give them long life. She'll see his children. He's exposed to death. Okay, that's getting real close to it. And as I said, it's happened to me four times now. Birth, gunshot, colon cancer, lung cancer. They were all grim. That bullet wound was no picnic, I guarantee. But the worst of all of them, colon cancer. That had burst in my colon death. I didn't have medical insurance. I couldn't, I didn't know what it was. And I couldn't get any answers from these little clinics you can go to in the mall and whatnot. I was on my deathbed when I finally, because the planes hit New York and I saw all how sad the relatives were of the people they'd lost. Parents, children. And it hit me. What are my kids going to think? Because we're close. We were close. Um, that I just died in this dingy apartment on this floor without getting help from anybody. I had a hard time asking for help, uh, which has changed. I don't control that anymore. You know, if God wants me to have help and there's somebody that will help, he'll go ask them. But that wasn't my nature. But I did. I called my dad. I was low on money. And he said, 
I said, you got to pay for a colonoscopy. I'm not going to make it through the day. And he did, and they found the eight-inch tumor. The chastisement, punishment, my treatment, crushing and bruising in God's flower refinement is to remove the bitterness and furious nature of Ezekiel. It is to make a man meek and humble. Moses, who killed a man when we first seen him, he had such a furious spirit, he killed a man in anger and then ran away. Moses was called the most humble man on earth at the end of his life. Of course, God had him for 40 years. <laughs> He'll get you humble. He'll, <laughs> He'll straighten you out. But as I tell you, yeah, it's just ridiculous. You got 16 years. It's too much. You got to refine your process. You got to bring it out of antiquity into the, the modern era, as he says about Judaism. He just laughs at it. <laughs> Thanks, I'm so funny. I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> That's him laughing through me. He wants you to sleep. That's what I do. That's him, yeah. He did not open his mouth. Ezekiel was sent to his house, and God bound him with the cords of his power so that he could not go out amongst the people. Do the same thing to me. Go to your room. I don't have, I live in my parents' condo. Go to your room. You know, I live in a room. No, I don't have any friends except the Holy My best friend is the Holy Spirit for my part. But he's really the only friend I got. Of course, me and my, my sister are friendly. They ain't me and my parents. But outside of the family, no, nobody. To the people, Ezekiel was silent as a lamb. He didn't come out of his house. He couldn't. He's crushed and bruised and pinned to the ground, handcuffed. Facing Jerusalem for all the 40 days when he was allowed to turn over. I can't go a night without flipping over in the bed. I can't do one night. He had to do a year and something, something. What is it, 340 days? But anyway, 40 days, he got, with 40 days left, he got to flip on to the other side. The man who is described and becomes God's righteous servant will be cut off from the land of the living. That's me. This was written so that you wouldn't know it was me. That I wasn't declaring it. This one? Uh -uh, this is from the life of God's righteous servant. <laughs> we got so many 53s. God's righteous servant will be cut off from the land, is cut off from the land of the living, and is silent as a lamb to all that know him while God prepares him to be suitable for his purposes that might prosper, just as he did Ezekiel. Now, Rashi does not explain how or when this happened to all the Jewish people as the man Israel. Hint, it didn't. Okay, that's verse 7. That's just Isaiah talk, uh, writing or talking. But, of course, God's telling him what to write. Uh, just as, you know, this looks like I wrote it, but God told me what to write, as though it was me, I guess. Rashi, from imprisonment and from judgment. Oh, this is verse 8, Rashi's Bible. From imprisonment and from judgment he is taken, and, and, and his generation who shall tell? For he was cut off from the land of the living. Because of the transgressions of my people, a plague befell them. Them is Israel. <laughs> Their transgressions caused the plague to befall them. Let me tell you a little bit that in the Hebrew Bible, God takes credit for it. Just like he says, I'm going to bring utter destruction. But then he tells me, yeah, but I am my creation. I just mean my creation is going to do it one day if they don't build that temple and get me in. And, and he, me, lift me up, let everybody know. The Jewish people firmly believe they've been right about God all along. And that's what you're saying. And that's right to the Christians. And we need you, some of you rabbis,